Hi, Wes here, Airstream Wanderings. Thanks for joining me today. Appreciate that. And today, short video, making human hair brushes. Sometimes, in fact, many times, I like to outline my painting first or have outlines for the things that I do, fine lines. Uh, this is a style I like a lot where I draw fine lines around things. And uh, to make up for my lack of painting skill, Having a decent brush makes a big difference, and I know lots of people like to use yucca. Um, I've never done that, actually. But human hair brushes have worked really well for me. What they do is they help me draw long, thin lines, and uh, they're pretty easy to make. And so we're going to do that today. If that interests you, please come along. I've made brushes from a variety of different things. Uh, this one is from elk fur. Uh, this is from a mule deer. I've got some bear fur. This is made from a natural bristle brush that I deconstructed from the hardware store. Uh, they're okay, but I've not had the greatest luck with those. The ones that work the best for me are these natural human hair brushes. And the kind of hair you want is someone who has straight hair and really fine silky hair. In fact, I have a three-year-old granddaughter who's never had her hair cut. Can't wait, because I'm going to get a little bit of that. It's going to be perfect. Uh, and if you've seen the top of my head, you know that my own hair isn't going to uh, do the trick. So first thing you want to do is find someone who will donate you uh, some fine human hair. Okay, let's move on to the next step. So the next uh, consideration is uh, the handle. And I think this is kind of a personal uh, consideration. For fine lines, I like a thin handle. Uh, these are bamboo skewers. You get them at the grocery store for uh, making kebabs of one sort or another. I suppose they're about a millimeter thick, maybe a millimeter and a half. Uh, but you can use different ones as well. Uh, the thicker ones just for me haven't worked out so well, but it might be perfect for you. If you use a larger one, I think what you want to do is uh, taper the end of it. It will help kind of get your hairs kind of pointed all in the right direction. Uh, does not seem to be very in, uh, necessary for a smaller skewer like this. Uh, there's also a, another uh, video on making brushes that Tony Soros made. And so you might want to go search for that. And that might be helpful for you to figure out your own design. Other materials you need, you're going to need uh, some glue. I just use wood glue. I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference what you use, whatever you have handy, but having it be water resistant, I think makes good sense because you're going to wash your brushes. You don't want them to fall apart. You're also going to need some thread, and this is just an old spool of sewing thread. Uh, I think as long as it's relatively flexible, like cotton, some uh, synthetic threads are real uh, stiff and I think that would make it a little bit more difficult but again whatever you have available you could probably use string as well uh, give that a try so get a hank of hair try to straighten it out as best you can I think it's easiest if you trim off the end of it so it's square although I don't know that that's really necessary in my handle, I have uh, tapered the end of it. I, it does seem to work a little bit better, although I'm not sure it's completely necessary. Uh, I put a little bit of glue on the end of the hair just to get it to kind of clump together, stick together. I think that's good enough. The thing with fine hair, it makes it somewhat more difficult to, to work with. Also, maybe put a little bit of glue on the end of our stick to get everything to stick together. I've got my thread laid out perpendicular, so it's ready to roll. Hopefully it works. Get it laid out in place. Tie one knot in it to... Get it to hold together. So now it's reasonably secure. 
and then just wrap the end Okay, there's the other end gets wrapped too. Um, if a person had uh, equipment for making flies for fly fishing, that would probably make life easier. They don't have that, and I don't think it's necessary. I would suggest making several of these brushes, and then what you, you can experiment with that. Uh, find out how long a bristle you want on it, um, how many. Uh, Obviously, fewer hairs end up uh, giving you finer lines. Um, and then, so I just cut off whatever I don't want. But uh, let it dry and then just clip off uh, the end. I find that having a straight end uh, works the best, but you might find that having a tapered end on your brushes will work better for you. Uh, again, it's all a matter of personal preference and you'll find that you'll use different brushes for different purposes. Full disclosure here, I did not come up with this design. I don't know how long it's been around. I first saw this though from Tori Hopes who taught a class on painting and she made brushes like this. So I'm borrowing her design. So thank you Tori, good job. And here's one of the brushes in action. A piece of paper and you have a longer bristle like this uh, tend to make it a little bit easier to get straight lines this is a piece of uh, unfired pottery let's we'll see how that works more porous Now this is a longer bristle and what you'll see is it loads up with more paint and then it, it sags down like that. In some cases that can be okay, gives you a heavy longer line. Somewhat harder to control I think. If you want to make curved lines, it's a different matter. Well, thanks for joining me today while I make these little human hair brushes. I appreciate you tuning in, your comments, subscriptions, all those things. Until next time, this is Wes with Airstream Wanderings, wishing you health, happiness, peace, and love. Take care. Bye-bye.